everyone, it's Valerie back for the third folk tale I'm going to read today, and I hope you enjoy it. Let's begin. The Fairy Shoemaker. Tom looks for a pot of gold. Mother, cried Tom, we are going to be rich. The Fairy Shoemaker knows where there is a huge pot of gold with thousands of coins in it. I am going to catch him, and I will make him tell me his secret. Tom's mother smiled and said, I have heard that the fairy shoemaker is a sly elf. I think you will become rich sooner if you do some useful work and earn your golden coins. But Tom did not like to work, so he started to hunt for the elf. Every day that week, Tom hunted for the fairy shoemaker in the woods and in the meadows. At last one afternoon, Tom heard a tiny tapping sound. Tick-a-tack, 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 too. At first, he thought it was a tapping of a woodpecker. But when he listened closely, he could hear somebody singing softly in a tiny voice. Tap, tick-a-tack, tick-a-tack, too. Tack a toe, tack a heel, soon we'll have a shoe. Tom crept quietly toward the voice. Oh, he thought, that must be the song of the fairy shoemaker. I'll catch him, and then he'll lead me to a huge pot of gold. Soon my mother and I will be rich. Tom crept forward quietly on his hands and knees, until he could see the fairy shoemaker. The tiny elf had a long nose and a pointed chin, and he wore a tall little green cap and an apron. The elf was busy pounding tacks into a tiny shoe that was upside down in front of him. As he worked, he sang. Tick-a-tack, 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 too. Tack a toe, tack a heel, soon we'll have a shoe. Good day, said Tom politely. The elf pretended he didn't hear. He did not even look up. Show me your pot of gold, cried Tom. Wait a minute, said the elf. I just dropped a tack. Help me find it. Tom knew that if he took his eyes off the fairy shoemaker, the sly little elf would disappear. I'll pretend I'm looking for the tack, thought Tom, but I won't take my eyes off him or he'll disappear. As Tom crept forward on his hands and knees, the sly elf snatched up some dust and threw it in Tom's face. The dust made Tom sneeze, and when he sneezed, he shut his eyes. He opened them quickly, but the elf had already disappeared. Tom tries again. Tom was not ready to give up. He said to himself, if I found the fairy shoemaker once, I can find him twice. Next time, I won't let him throw dust in my eyes and make me sneeze. Every day Tom hunted for the elf, and on the fifth day he heard the tap, tap, tap of the fairy shoemaker's hammer again. When he listened closely, he could hear the elf singing. Tick-a-tack, 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 too. Tack a toe, tack a heel, soon we'll have a shoe. Tom crept forward until he could see the elf sitting in the shade of a tree. Now, thought Tom, I won't let the elf throw dust in my face, and I will keep my eyes on him so he can't disappear. I won't glance away once. The fairy shoemaker was pounding tacks into the toe of a tiny shoe that was upside down in front of him. That's a fine shoe, said Tom, as he crept forward on his hands and knees. He kept his eyes on the elf every minute so the little man would not disappear. Why do you work so hard? asked Tom. We should all work, 
answered the elf without glancing up. You ought to do a little work yourself for a change. <laughs> laughed Tom. That would be foolish. I don't need to work. I shall become rich without working. Then as quick as a wink, Tom grabbed the fairy shoemaker. I have caught you at last, cried Tom. Now you can't throw dust in my eyes and make me sneeze. I won't let you go unless you lead me to the huge pot of gold. Well, said the elf, if I must lead you to my treasure, I suppose I must. Away they went across the meadow and into the thick woods. You will find the huge pot of gold there, said the elf, pointing to the to foot of the tree. Dig there for the treasure. I'll have to go home for a shovel, said Tom, but first I'll put my yellow tie around this tree. Then I can find the right tree when I come back. Tom glanced at the fairy shoemaker and saw that he was smiling slyly. Will you promise not to touch the tie while I'm gone? asked Tom. Yes, I promise not to touch it, said the sly elf. I promise not to let anyone else touch it either. Then I'll let you go free, said Tom, putting the fairy shoemaker down. Thanks for leading me to the gold. The elf began to laugh. <laughs> he laughed. You'll find that you have to work for any gold you get. And pop! The next second he had disappeared. Tom ran to get a shovel and hurried back to the woods. He could hardly wait to begin digging for the treasure. We shall be rich, he cried with joy. I caught the fairy shoemaker and he told me his secret. But when Tom returned to the woods, he gave a long, low whistle of surprise because every single tree had a yellow tie around it. The fairy shoemaker had kept his promise. Nobody had touched Tom's tie, but the sly elf had fooled him again. I can't tell which tie is mine, said Tom almost in tears. Now I shall never be able to find the treasure. Finally, Tom turned sadly toward his home. My mother is right, he said. I shall become rich sooner if I do some useful work and earn my gold. The End